All right, everyone. It's about 5.47 p.m. And it is time to hear from Mr. Scott Cannon, otherwise known as the chemist with the K. All right. And he's going to give his point counterpoint. So let's see what he has today. Hello, Scott. Hello, humans. I am Scott Cannon coming to you live on WLTH 1370 AM from the greatest city in all the world. Gary, Indiana. And this is the counterpoint. Well, folks, it's been 511 days since the 16th highest rated passer in NFL history, Colin Kaepernick, has had a job with the league. But if the owners of the NFL thought that by merely blackballing the quarterback who started his protest of not standing during the national anthem in 2015 was going to make their problems go away, <laughs> they have another thing coming. See, since Kaepernick has been away, the protest movement that he started has gone from just him and his teammate Eric Reed kneeling before games kneeling to Stevie Wonder, Roger Waters, Eddie, Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam, and celebrities in the music world kneeling, to even X-File stars Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny posting a picture of them kneeling on Twitter. It's even become a hot-button issue in our political system, with our erratic and opportunistic President Donald Trump using the topic as red meat to his mostly white conservative base by striking out at players who kneel before the anthem and the NFL teams who, in his opinion, rock in a hard place, took action, trying to split the difference between the players, 70% of whom are black, and their sponsors, and mostly mainstream white audience who are offended by the gesture of doing anything other than saluting the flag and standing at attention. They came up with these spanking new rules where players who didn't want to stand for the national anthem could stay in the locker room. But those who chose to come out during the ceremony had to stand or face consequences like fines and suspension. It was supposed to make everyone happy. The problem is, Nobody was made happy by these rules. The people who believed that everyone should stand during the national anthem were angry that players were being allowed not to stand, with the president of the United States blasting NFL commissioner Roger Goodell, claiming, isn't it in contract that players must stand at attention hand on heart? The $40 million commissioner must now take a stand. First time kneeling out for game. Second time kneeling out for season. No pay. And now the players are offended, too, because the new rules were implemented without the agreement of the NFL Players Association, and they think that the owners and commissioner are just trying to silence their voices. Now, me personally, as strangely as, as, strange as it sounds, I actually agree with the NFL's new policy. It was always what I believe should have happened. If you don't want to stand, then stay in the locker room. But if you do want to come out during the national anthem, you should have to stand sounds reasonable enough to me. I mean, your employer doesn't have to let you protest or espouse your political beliefs at your job. You can't be working at McDonald's with your black fist raised in the air while cooking french fries. But at the same time, I don't believe that your employer should be able to force their political beliefs on you either, which is the issue that I had with the other rules that force players to stand in compliance with forced jingoism. But now you have players saying they're going to come out and protest anyway, which forced the Miami Dolphins to suspend their policy. And just today, perennially tone-deaf Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones exclaimed that he wouldn't follow the NFL's policy either and would force all of his players to stand for the anthem, regardless of what the Players Association or anybody thought. Statements like this make me think that 150 years ago, Jerry Jones would have been the very last slave owner holding on to his slaves, regardless of what those damn Yankees think. But I digress. Mostly, I just want to remind people of what the original purpose of the protest was in the first place, which was Colin Kaepernick responding to his perception that black Americans were not getting justice in the legal system and were being murdered by public servants, a.k.a. the police, with impunity, and that it's important to not let megalomaniacal owners, sensationalized media, and our opportunistically slimy president change that narrative. This is about fighting for the justice of black Americans in the United States of America. 
Let us please not let that get lost in our tendency to grandstand and sensationalize every issue. Okay? Okay, folks. You can chop it up with me on Twitter, at The Chemist Liz. The Chemist is spelled with a K as I am a product of the Gary Community School System. We can talk about politics, music, sports. You can tell me how terrible I am at this job. Or you can just listen to me every Monday from 6 to 8 on Issues and Answers with Jonathan Booz and the McGee Report, brought to you by the precocious hostess with the mostest, Jamelia McGee. I am Scott Cannon, and that was The Counterpoint on WLTH 13, 7 a.m. God bless the working class, and God bless labor. I am out, humans. All right, awesomely said. Now, um, really quickly here, I have some entertainment news. So, I don't know if you uh, saw this, but Donald Trump's Hollywood Walk of Fame star uh, actually was, like, completely, like, demolished. And um, it was left in pieces. And uh, 24-year-old Austin Clay is actually the one to blame. He had a pickaxe and he was just like going to town on that poor little star. Now um, uh, he actually agreed to pay $4,000 to fix it up after uh, pleading no contest. So, yeah, he kind of lost out. I mean, that seems pretty stupid. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, you you know, go out and vote, organize your people. Right. You know, and and get your people elected. Right. Change the, the political structure that way all, all they're doing now is just creating more sympathy for trump with stuff like this right and and i mean just really trump. ruining his star what is that going to do you know Nothing. i mean it you know it's not going to change anything so yeah you're right so kids don't do that um also let's see here it's really not entertainment news but i wanted to tell you because i know every time i see you you're eating hot chips so I just wanted to put this out there that a 17-year-old girl from Tennessee had to have her gallbladder, gallbladder removed, and her doctor said that hot Cheetos may be to blame. What? Yes. All what? right, so Renee Craighead of Memphis, Tennessee, estimates that she was eating about four bags a day of different spicy flavored chips. Now, what? she apparently developed a pain in her stomach, went to the hospital, and had to have her gallbladder removed. Her doctor believes that the hot chips could be partly to blame, and Frito-Lay, as well as Takis, both released separate statements stating, uh, reassure, just reassuring that, um, their chips are safe to eat, but added that they could and should be enjoyed in moderation. So, with this that being said... Worst, uh, this is the worst <laughs> thing that's happened to me all day. I had to have mine removed, and I was eating hot chips a lot. So... Oh. I just want to put that out there because it is a pain that you don't want to go through. Um, (laughs) So I just wanted to let you know. And also, um, Demi Lovato, yesterday, um, she apparently had a drug overdose. Now, she's 25 years old, and she's been uh, battling drug addiction as well as alcohol addiction for some time now. Um, There is a, a lot of speculation on what the dr- actual drug was because TMZ actually had reported yesterday that it was heroin. Um, the family is saying that it was not heroin, and they're saying that, uh, you know, at this time they just want their privacy and no speculation as her health and recovery is the most important thing right now. Now, her friends are stating that they knew that this would come, and they were just, you know, dreading that inevitable phone call. Um, wow. Saying. And then um, she apparently relapsed. So at this time, we really don't know, you know, exactly what the drug was that she tended to uh, relapse with and uh, overdose on. But uh, I'll keep everyone updated on that. And also, last but not least, I saw something about, um, what's his name? I lost it. Okay, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is, I guess, to guest star opposite 50 Cent on Sunday's Power. Wow. That's interesting. I don't, I don't watch Power, but, I don't either. you know, just to even see Kendrick Lamar on there is probably, like, going to be, like, something that's, like, kind of, like, hmm, mm. awesome. Okay. So that's all that I have for entertainment news. I had to, right. like, get I all of that out. Monday. I know. Monday. I know. It was my sister's birthday. So oh. I was off. But, yeah, that's what happened. And I won't be on tomorrow either because it's my birthday. So, oh. yeah. 
Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I was wondering about you. I was like, I wonder if they tell him that we we weren't going to be on the air on well, Monday. Well, I mean, we had to, we, we, we came, but we had to get uh, the, the blues guy. Uh, yeah. The doctor, what's his name to come in? So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I know I keep doing that. I don't give you guys, I don't give you guys notice. I give Natalie and everyone else notice, but I need to start telling you guys. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I will see you on Monday. All right, All right, bye. <laughs> All right, so um, really quickly here, let me go ahead and give the weather one more time. Um, now, to, uh, right now it's about 84 degrees. It is mildly sunny out there, and tonight is going to drop down a little bit to about 69.